Good morning, happy Friday. Welcome to day two of the coloured pencil raccoon. I, the more I've said that word, the more it doesn't sound like a word anymore. Have you ever done that? Raccoon uh, workshop. It was so lovely seeing some of your raccoons in the, uh, in the group yesterday. They are looking fantastic. Those noses are looking really kind of 3D and jumping off the page, which is the whole point really. It's try and get that form to try and get the illusion that it's something 3D created from something that's definitely uh, 2D. So I'm amazed. I'm astonished by the uh, level of work. And it's so lovely. I think when you look at your own work, and you're really intently looking at it, you can pick it apart forever. But when you see fresh work and it's someone else's, it just looks amazing and as it should. So I think we can be very self-critical, um, but they were absolutely amazing. I absolutely love them. I just wanna double check that I'm live. I think I am. Oh yeah, I can see people popping on. Say good morning if you are here with me live. It's always lovely to have a chat and that connection, that interaction, it makes it so much more enjoyable than me sitting here on my own all the time. So this is lovely. It's like drawing with friends in this virtual world, but it means we can reach people that we wouldn't be able to reach um, ordinarily because they'd be just too far away. So please do say good morning if you are jumping on live. Um, how did you feel about yesterday's workshop? Have you managed to have a go at your raccoon yet? Um, or are you saving it for the weekend possibly? Could be, completely up to you. Um, you've got as much time as you need. I'm gonna keep this workshop in the group. It's not gonna go anywhere and I will try to put it in guides if I remember. Um, feel free to prompt me on that. It just means that it's easier to find it within the group. If not, just search at the top raccoon and you should find or raccoon day one. I've called them raccoon workshop day one, day two and day three tomorrow. Uh, so today we're gonna be jumping into the fur. There's a few little techniques that I wanna show you that um, really help to create certain texture that is notoriously difficult with colored pencils. It's a question I get asked all the time and there's a few techniques that you can use so we're going to be trying that today um, we're going to be getting as much done as we can and moving on to the sweet little face and around the eyes uh, and then we'll see what we've got to do tomorrow it'd be lovely if we could get a little bit of every texture done during this workshop so that you can then continue on your own um, if you need to and of course the group is always there to help you I'm always there to answer questions um, as many as I can uh, please do tag me in them because otherwise they just disappear um, and I will do my best to look through them all. So how are you all feeling today? Are you feeling excited about jumping into your raccoon? Are you feeling a little bit tired? It is Friday. I always feel a little bit more tired on a Friday, but that's not a bad thing when it comes to drawing because we can kind of take whatever mood we are in and just go with it. Um, we can have a nice relaxing morning today, um, nice and slow, nice and chilled, and just see how far we can get. So I have done the mirror image thing. Thank you, Nicola, you are amazing. Um, fingers crossed it's working. Uh, we'll flip the screen now and go back to our raccoon. I might need to swivel around because the phone just does what it likes, um, but we will get started. I'm just gonna change the, I oh, know I don't, don't need to do that do I? I keep meaning to I'm gonna flip down I've got my lead I haven't noticed if I'm live yet I might need to take my cord away where am I um, I tried it with the back and it's just I've got too many gadgets holding onto the phone um, which makes it really difficult see it's upside down so I'll flip it around delay again with Facebook, which is always really helpful. Um, we'll just see, no, I've made it the wrong way. Um, this mirror imaging thing is really weird. I did flip it around and then, you know, when you look at your face and you look completely weird. Um, there you go. Hopefully you can see it and I can just about see where I'm drawing. Um, it's not covering too much of the drawing, although I am having to peep underneath. Right, let's get going. Let me just see if there's any. Oh, good morning, Leslie. How are you? Happy 1st of July. Yes, I know. <gasps> Frightening. Where's the first six months gone? It's really scary. Good morning, Margaret. 
Oh, it's lovely you're saying good morning to everyone. Please do comment and say hello. It's nice to have a chat with you all. Um, right, first things first today, I wanted to talk about embossing because this is just a game changer when it comes to white fur or light fur over dark fur, which is notoriously difficult. And um, this is just this just makes it so much easier, so much easier. So they come in, you can get these from Amazon. They actually come in a pack of three and they're all different sizes, as you can see. Am I showing you properly? Where's the camera? Um, so they they are all different sizes. And so you can get different thicknesses on the end. Now, before I bought these, don't have to go out and buy everything all of the time. Um, I just used a white pencil. I actually used the white Caran Dash pencil because it's, this is above titanium, but it's just, because it's softer, and because it's wax, more waxy based, um, it tends to repel the more oily based um, polychromos. So you tend to find that it doesn't go in the cracks as much. But what are we going to do today? It's really important that we get these whiskers in because we don't want to have to try and do those at the end. The slice tool works to a point, but um, not as good as embossing and a combination of all of the things that I'm kind of going to be talking about today. So I'm going to lift up the pencil again all around the area that we're going to be working on today. Don't want um, the pencil to show through. Try and get rid of another little tip with colour pencils. They do smudge a little bit. I don't think you ever get away with no smudging. I tend to go around my drawing at the end with my electric eraser um, because it cleans it up really easily. Just be careful if you've got one of these that you make sure you have enough eraser showing because there have been times, this comes off, there have been times when I've actually scuffed the paper with the metal Ooh, it's really really bad so i always clean that up but i always find if you clean up as you go you're much less likely to push it even further into the paper which is what you don't want now i always tended to go with the smallest embossing end but i've changed my tune on that a little bit i haven't got my glasses let me just go and grab them It just makes it a bit easier to <laughs> focus. Um, I always used to go for the smaller one, but actually it doesn't show up as well. You end up with really fine, fine lines, fine whiskers, which seems obvious, but actually it hasn't been obvious for me. So I'm going to actually use the third size and I'm going to start to indent the paper for the whiskers. You actually need to press pretty hard because you do want that dent in the paper. I've still got some of the whiskers showing because I just want you to see. I would normally take that completely away. You wanna get some of the whiskers going off at weird angles. You want some that are slightly bent, some that are finer, so you can go down a level and have some fine ones in amongst that because again, you want it to look natural. You don't want it to look um, really groomed and really um, symmetrical. It's just not the way things are in nature. Um, all of the little flyaways and the bent whiskers and the little hairs out of place all add to the um, overall look. So some thinner, some fatter, changing the ends. I'm just indenting the paper this way even though we are drawing onto nothing. There is a log that you could possibly add if you wanted to but um, you don't have to, but they will show up if you add that background. The other thing I'm gonna do with this embossing tool is have a little think. So a lot of this is about prep and just working out your next stage. By doing a little bit of prep beforehand, you will tend to find that you'll make things easier for yourself going forward. So you can see along this line here, this is where the kind of the lighter fur and the whiter fur is, and then it goes into dark fur, but there are flecks of white fur that go into the dark. Now, this is where colored pencils are notoriously difficult to use. Before I even thought about embossing, I would leave a gap. I would leave every individual hair, really be deliberate about where I was putting my pencil, 
but this just takes the pressure away. It gives you a little bit of a foolproof plan that enables you to then lift it back up with the Tombow and it definitely shows. For this, I am gonna use a small one, so the smallest and the second smallest, and I'm gonna go along the line of where the hairs are. I'm pressing quite hard, but not ridiculously hard, so I want it to show up. I'm doing a little crisscross, so I'm not just going and doing a straight parallel lines. Some of the lines are coming over the top in a little crisscross pattern, and that tends to give more, more of a natural look because hair tends to clump. It doesn't tend to lie flat in nature. It tends to kind of stick together. And if you do the crisscross, you end up with these lovely natural points because obviously where the crosses meet, you get a point in the middle. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, and then you can work with that point. I'm gonna go all the way along where the neck is. I've taken away that line, so I'm gonna to have to guess where it is. I'm just gonna come all the way along here. We don't want to leave any of the embossing out. And make sure that you do plenty of lines, probably more than you think, because we don't want just the odd white line showing. I'm gonna do the same on the other side where it touches the brown. Just thinking about the direction of the fur, some of them go down, we tend to work up the face and then around the eyes, it's a bit confusing because it goes kind of clockwise around the eye. Coming up here, coming across a little bit because there's brown here, coming down to meet the whiskers, crossing over some of the hairs, making sure some of the hairs are a bit longer and they stick out, a little bit random. Where else do we need it? We might as well go around the eyes as well whilst we're here. So we can come down next to the eyes. There's quite a lot of white going on, looking at the direction of the fur again. This kind of goes around the eye like a clock. And then coming up where the brown stripe down the middle of the face is, we're gonna add those. So you might as well do this little bit of preparation. Again, if this was um, not a demonstration, I'd be taking away the lines completely. I wouldn't want them to show. I'm gonna come around the eye a little bit. There's a point that goes up there and then comes down. So I'm using the embossing tool just like I would hold a pencil. And adding plenty of lines, even though you can't see them that well. Coming across here. These are getting longer, so make your embossing strokes longer. Make sure they cross over each other. But the general direction is going off to the side. Just try not to get my hand in the way. So coming down, make sure we've got them all in. To tilt your head to the side, have a little look, make sure everything's in place. We haven't forgotten any areas. I'm just gonna put it in here, just in case we add a little bit of grey. So coming around here, is it all in? Have we got enough lines? I think we're getting there. And then the same on the other side. Coming up to that little point. Coming down. Does the fur change direction? Yes, it does. What's the length of the fur? And then coming down here. So this kind of thing would be brilliant on drafting film. If any of you have used drafting film, you'll know that the slice tool, which is this one, this is the pen cutter, works beautifully on drafting film. Drafting film is just like a kind of opaque, slightly transparent um, type of paper. It's actually for, um, which is why it's called drafting film. Um, people kind of use, put blueprints on it or that kind of thing. But artists have adopted it because it's brilliant for texture. It's brilliant for um, scraping away fine lines. It's brilliant for getting those lovely flyaways. It's just a really nice different type of surface to work on. So um, give it a go if you haven't done that. And if you want to ask any questions about it, I'll answer as much as I can. If you want to put a comment, I'm just going to check the comments if there are any. Good morning, Nicola. Morning, Kate. Lovely to see you. Thank you for joining me. 
I do appreciate the support. It's lovely to have you here. Um, should I go up there? No, I don't think I will because I'm going to be doing that forever. So we've got our embossing done. We've got our dents in. You can actually see them quite well on the camera, which is good. Just going for a sip of tea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Nugget, one of my favourite brown pencils, if I can find it. It's, um, it's just fab because it's a really natural brown. A lot of the um, browns I've used before, they've just got this funny, funny look to them that aren't particularly natural. This one is fab. So I'm going to start going into the nose and adding this little brown stripe. I'm going to be using the fur technique, which is the just little lines going in the direction of the fur, but I'm not doing it all over. Good morning, Roger. Nice to have you here. Um, not doing it all the same amount of pencil strokes over the whole thing, because as you can see, there's quite a lot of lighter hairs within the dark and there's some much darker stripes. So I'm spacing them out quite a lot at the moment. So this is a really good way to get all different colours within the fur without getting that muddy look. Because if you do a whole layer of nugget completely covering the paper and then you try and go up with the different colours, you might run out of layers and it might not show up as much. So if I was drawing one colour in this space, I would be quite um i suppose it's like a bit of a rhythm i would get into a bit of a rhythm of adding the same amount of pencil all over the area with this i'm really trying to space it out a little bit so that i've got room within this layer to add more color and i've tried it a few different ways i've experimented a little bit and i found that this way you get the least amount of muddiness. You get more options. It makes it easier going forward. And again, it's all about that prep, um, which is important. I'm just adding a little bit of nugget in under the eye because it's quite brown there. And I'm gonna go all the way up and this gets quite dark. I'm really spacing them out and actually the camera's picking up the spacing quite well. So that's good. I'm following the direction of the fur going up, but I'm doing a little bit of a crisscross because I want them to cross over. I want them to look like they're clumping. And I'm rotating my pencil every other stroke or so just to make sure that I keep that sweet spot. This saves you sharpening your pencil every three seconds, but um, it is important to use a sharp point because your first strokes can only be as fine as the end of your pencil. If your pencil's starting to blunt, move it up a little bit, and you get um, a blunt end, your first strokes are going to become fat. <laughs> and it sounds really obvious, but they're going to look blurry. They're going to look fuzzy, and they're going to look grainy. If you look at your reference photo, you can see the individual fur strokes. You can see how fat they are, that is really important. It does make a big difference. So I, I'm definitely one of these people that if we can get away with not sharpening them that much, then, then do, because they're not cheap, obviously. We don't want to waste them. You can do little hacks where you have, you can get those mini sandpapers and you can just rub the end so you don't shave it away constantly. I would say, because these pencils are such good quality, they don't tend to break like the Prismacolors um, are known for. I'm going down the side now because there's a little bit of brown on the edge of the white. And use a really sharp blade on your sharpener so that you're not damaging the pencil in any way. You can just take a little layer off and then it's done. Right, so I've added, spaced out all over. And now I'm going to look at the pattern. I'm just going to come down here a little bit more. I'm going to look at the patterns within this brown and see where it's darker. As we go further up, we get darker. We want to add a few more colours in there. Um, but there are dark patches within this light nugget. We've started with this brilliant natural colour. 
I'm going to actually sharpen the end a little bit. So it's just one turn of the sharpener and that does its job. And I'm going to start to pick out the patterns now. Can you see that down here there's a patch of darker fur? It's a similar colour, but it's darker. We want all of these little slight changes in colour and that's going to add to the detail. Coming up here, some of them are in lines, some of them are kind of circles. I'm not pressing any harder, I'm just putting more pencil strokes within that area. I'm keeping everything light and once we start adding the dark, we're going to notice that this needs to go an awful lot darker than we think. So don't worry about thinking that it's going too dark. I promise you it won't be. If you're using a light hand, just barely touching the paper, just enough for obviously that colour to transfer onto the paper, um, then we will have enough room and enough layers to be able to get all of the colours in. So what I tend to do is look for little landmarks. On the reference photo, as we come down a little bit on the nose, there's a clear line across the middle. It's a clump of fur and I want to put that in because it really does add to the lovely detail of a piece. I want some pencil strokes to be a little bit longer, some to be crossing over but generally going in that up direction. Then we've got a gap as we come to in line with the white. So I'm always looking for these little reference points. And then we've got a big dark clump here. That's probably going to be darker pencil. And we can go in with the different colours in a second. But for now, I just want to map it out. So if I got interrupted and I had to have a break from this drawing and came back, you know, in half an hour or an hour, I would kind of know where I am. And it just takes less time to get back into the drawing. Have you ever found that, that you just think, oh, no, I don't know where I was. I don't know what I was doing. So coming up the side now making sure that we've got a gap between the eye and the darkest part of the stripe down the middle of the nose. And then coming up here, longer pencil strokes as well. They flick off into the white. We've got that guarantee of the embossing. So I don't have to worry too much about filling in the white parts. So I'm only gonna kind of cut up to here. And then as we go further up the nose, it gets a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more nugget and I'm going to fill in some of the gaps that I've left because actually it does get darker. We're going to put colours on top. We don't need the colours in the middle. So I want to darken up and layer more of this nugget into that top part of the nose. But still keeping those lines we've made, we don't want to lose those. So keep working, tiny little pencil strokes, don't be, um, oh, what's the word? Until it's Friday. Um, don't get impatient, I suppose, <laughs> is what I want to say, because what tends to happen is you find yourself in this little area and you get, you feel a little bit confident because you're like, oh, this is okay. I'm putting my pencil down. I kind of know what I'm doing. But what tends to happen is that you get a little bit pencil happy and you start making your lines longer. I've done it myself. I'm doing it now. I'm constantly having to correct myself and pull myself back. We don't want the lines to be any longer. We need to pull ourselves back, you know, slow down. And um, because it is important, because otherwise we're going to end up with a really shaggy looking section here. The raccoon's fur by the nose, like with most animals, the nose part is a lot shorter. It's longer as it goes out and it's shorter here. We don't want it to look really shaggy. So if you find that that is happening to your drawings, it might be that your pencil strokes are just a little bit too long and maybe you're getting a bit tired, your hand's starting to ache and it might be time for a little break and then come back and just be mindful of the length of your pencil strokes. Okay, the nuggets. Right, we're going to move on to the Van Dyke. How are you getting on? Is anyone drawing with me? Let me know. I'd love to know if we are doing it at the same time. 
because that always makes me feel nice. Let me know in the comments. I've got to keep having a sip of tea, otherwise my throat gets really dry. Oh, broken me end off already. So going in with the Van Dyke brown and starting to build up on the patterns that we've already put in. Dark around the edge there. It's definitely darker as we come up here. We will blend all of this in, but again, I find it really helpful to put these little bits in that let me know where I'm going, what I'm doing, and making it look a little bit different. So again, small pencil strokes, keep remembering that. It's almost like telling yourself to relax your shoulders, isn't it? You're drawing away, Karen. Oh, lovely. That's nice to know. Oh, you are, Kate. How lovely. Oh. How's it going? Are you enjoying it? I hope you are. So, yeah, keeping going with the Van Dyke. It was I saying about, yeah, relaxing your shoulders. It's things like that. You kind of don't notice you're doing it until you think, oh, right, hang on a minute. Relax my shoulders. Don't let them tense up. It's the same with your hand. It gets a little bit tired, a little bit tense. You're holding your pencil. But don't be tempted to speed it up in any way. So coming up here as well and across. A little bit of a triangle forming there. That's when the crisscross will help. And then we want to blend. So even in a lighter area, you're going to find some dark hairs. This is all looking really light now down here. So we're going to add a bit of the Van Dyke down here, especially these little lines we've made. So adding a little bit more to that, a little point there, coming up into the side. And then once we've got our little lines in and they still show up, we can add little darker hairs within the lighter parts because if you look at the reference photo, there is definitely dark hairs within the light. Coming up here. Going over a few times into the darker areas. Now another little thing that I've been doing a lot lately, and I've always done it, I think, but I'm I'm I just feel more passionate about it lately because I feel like it's a bit of a game changer when it comes to fur. Um, not every artist does it, and of course it's completely up to you whether you do it at all, but I found that by going over what you've just done with a lighter pencil, so have a look at the lightest colour in your reference photo, maybe see some of the areas of the fur underneath. If you struggle to get soft looking fur that doesn't look grainy and doesn't look kind of spiky, then this is a game changer. You go over the top, with a lighter pencil, really light hand, turn it on the side, don't have it straight on, turn it on the side and just very, very gently go over the top. So this is what we do when we use graphite, we blend in between our layers. Now you can, you are obviously blending when you're adding another layer of pencil, but I feel like you've got so much more control if you blend in between. What this does is it picks up a little bit of the pigment onto the end of your pencil and spreads it out a little bit. You're pressing really lightly, so it's not even like you're using up a layer, but you are softening all of that fur. The pencil strokes still show through, but I just feel like it pulls it together and it suddenly looks like you've got quite a few layers of fur down. So you are going to lose a little bit of uh, the detail in the fur, but not a lot. And it's it actually, I think, makes it look better rather than worse. You are going to put the detail back in a little bit. Um, you're not losing the texture in any way. You're just giving that illusion of really thick, dense fur. I'm just going back in with the nugget. Because don't forget, fur is made up of loads and loads of layers. They've all got different lifespans. You know, some of the hairs are ready to come out and some are just growing. So even on our own heads, you know, you've got these baby hairs coming through. 
and they've all got their different stages of growth, which means you're going to have lots and lots of layers of different lengths of fur. And I think this just makes it so much better. I found it works. I think you can see it so well. Um, when I was drawing a black Labrador recently, blending in between layers, doing that, it really just made such a difference to the end result. Sometimes you look at your piece of work when it's finished and you think, mm, I, there's just something about it and I don't know what it is. That might be one of the things. Give it a go, see what you think. So I'm going in with the Van Dyke, coming around the eye a little bit because around this section there's quite a lot of dense, deep brown fur. And then it gets a little bit lighter as you go towards the nose. And then as we come up past the white part, it gets darker. So I'm gonna add more Van Dyke Brown coming up here. And we wanna create like a little um, darker V shape down here. So coming up a little bit more, adding to the fur, again, thinking about your crisscross. It's really quite dark as we go up. Just want to speed up a little bit because I am in one of those relaxed, <laughs> relaxed drawing modes. You know, you can lose, I do like these, um, this feeling because you can lose yourself in it which isn't it what it's all about really that you can shut off the rest of the world and just have get lost in what you're doing because you need to concentrate so enough of your brain is occupied which I always think is good right the Van Dyke and then we're going to move up to the walnut another color I absolutely love a beautiful rich deep dark brown Carrying on with these little darker areas. So you can see I don't blend every layer because sometimes the pencils are blending themselves. So it's a little bit of a judgment call, but I just find in those lower layers and the base layers, it really helps. It really helps to create soft fur. So coming all the way up here. Adding these little lines and patterns and clumps within the fur. Rotating my pencil regularly. Following the direction. I'm not letting my pencil strokes get any longer. Just getting into a bit of a rhythm now. So I think well, one of the good things about coloured pencils is that they are slow. It can be very tempting to rush, rush through and just want to get it done. But I feel like I'm like that with so many things in my life. It's like, what's happening next? What's happening tomorrow? What have I got going on? You know, it's all of this never being in the moment, always thinking about what you've got to do next. And... I feel like it's just a bit of a shame. I feel like that's when overwhelm completely kicks in and you start getting stressed and you start feeling like it's all getting a bit too much when you're constantly looking to the future and seeing what else is next. If you can lose yourself and give your brain a little bit of space to just slow down, slow your body down as well, then... Um, I feel like it's a shame to bring in my speediness or my <laughs> want of moving on. And it's completely natural. We've all done it, definitely. But I'm always trying to enjoy the process and enjoy what I'm doing. And having that lovely kind of feeling that you had when you first started. I'm just going to go in with the nugget just to fill in that gap a little bit. Of just seeing a drawing come to life and thinking, wow, 
it's looking like I want it to look. You know, the fur is looking soft and the eyes are looking glassy. And wow, that looks like a real dog or real fur. It's just amazing. So having that feeling and not letting it go, not letting that fade. And I think a big part of that is enjoying the process and slowing down. Um, by all means, you know, have a think about what you want to draw next. And imagine you've got a million things on your drawing list. I know I have. But not letting that overwhelm you or make you feel frustrated. Um, because the thing is, the drawing's done. It will get done. Uh, and then it's on, it's like a fleeting moment. You never really sit and enjoy. You might look at it for a while and think, oh, yeah, quite like that. But I can guarantee you probably pick it apart. And think of all the things that you um, wish you'd done better or you're not quite happy with that bit. And it's a fleeting moment. So even if you are pleased with that drawing, um, it's straight on to the next one. So we need to enjoy the process. And take the pressure off because we do put so much pressure on ourselves. I'm going in with the dark sepia now, 175. One of my favourite pencils. It does seem a little bit boring that I really like this <laughs> colour, but it's so versatile. It's like your trusty friend in your toolkit. So I'm going up and I'm darkening up up here. Probably needs a little bit more going on. But you can see it's starting to come together. I want to add little lines in keep moving my reference photo around and then losing. I'm going to add some of the dark sepia even into the lighter areas and the edge of the embossing part. You can see the little white hair starting to show through. That's really going to notice the darker we go. Some little lines coming down by the nose. It's quite dark down here so we want it to look like the nose isn't just floating. We've got this little bulbous thing coming out the end. We want it to look like it's attached <laughs> to the body. So I'm darkening up little areas. There's really dark patches of fur. I'm using kind of the fur technique and also little scribbly motions. So some little white patches that are still visible within there. So leaving those free as much as you can. Coming up the sides, adding the little patterns in, little line there, just want to add that. Do want to add the darker fur around. Coming up here, coming into here. And then I want to go up next to the eye and add a little bit of dark up here. I'm actually going to come next to the eye and start to add some dark sepia whilst I've got it in my hand around the eye. So thinking about the clockwork again, the, this is anti-clockwise and then that would be clockwise. And I'm gonna to start to add the dark sepia in all of the areas that I can see this black fur. Thinking about your edging, so the, the way that you get the softer lines towards the edge is by lifting your pencil off. So you go harder where you start and then lifting it off. So you get a finer line which is what furs really like. You get a thicker base where the root is and then it's finer as it goes out. This takes a little bit of practice and I probably do it slowly to begin with. So you flick out and you end up with this lovely fine line, a bit like a tick. Um, and then as you get more confident or maybe as the area gets bigger, you can kind of go a little bit speedier. I wanna go all the way around the eye And then hopefully it will all start to come together, keeping those edges nice and soft, and which is why it's really important to sharpen your pencil. Coming down here, really dark there. We are going to add some black. I'm going to go in and use small circles just to fill in the gaps. We don't want any graininess. It's really, really dark. This is going to take quite a few layers. Coming down here, thinking about that little catch light, darkening up a line down there. 
and then you can see that there are areas of lighter and then areas that get darker. So coming down here, using the third technique, we want it to be a lot darker. In fact, we're gonna be using quite a lot of black, but at the moment, again, it's really important to build up the layers. I'm gonna go in with this dark sepia. In here, there's actually a little bit of a reflection of blue. So I'm gonna put that in before I forget. Can you see it on your reference photo? Didn't notice that before. Certainly didn't notice it when it was on my PC, but there's a shine to the blackness, which is um, gonna be fun. It's gonna add a little bit of a shine within the dark. I'm gonna add it to the other side. I'm just putting it at the bottom because I don't want it to disappear. Get of that. Um, I think I lost connection there. Can you see me? Is everything working? Video paused. Yeah, I know. What's going on? Am I back? I hope I am. Usually my internet's really good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what happened. I'm going to carry on because hopefully it's working okay. Am I back? Let me know. Pause, but back. Brilliant. Excellent. How annoying. Technology. Oh, it's just the bane of my life. When things work, it's amazing. When they don't, you can do exactly the same things and it all goes a bit pear-shaped. So I'm bringing this dark sepia in. I'm thinking about the direction around the eye. And then I'm lengthening my pencil and thinking about, it kind of got, goes up at a 45 degree angle here, thinking about my pencil strokes and the direction. I'm still doing a little bit of a crisscross because I just want it to clump. And this is where the embossing is going to be showing up a little bit towards the edge. Coming down here, next to the whiskers, and then lengthening the pencil strokes, crisscross. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. But we can start to see our embossing lines, which is good. There's a whisker there. It's like magic, isn't it? You can see whether you've done your whiskers in the right place. It's always a little bit of a gamble to begin with. So thinking about um, getting these edges in and then we can start to fill. We want to get the shape right. Um, a little bit flicking up there. Comes around the eye a little bit more and we're darkening that. It's definitely going to be some white lines showing through. We want to darken next to the eye. So I'm using a little bit of a scribbly technique and I want to darken up all of this as well. It's a little bit uh, wider than I've done it to begin with and inside is pretty intense dark. So this dark sepia is good. We generally don't want to go in with the black too soon. I'm just having to peer under my phone. Because once you put the black in, it does leave a stain on the paper. You can't lift it up as easily. The dark sepia, you can a little bit more. And also the black tends to smudge quite a lot. So I would recommend just doing it at the end. I want these white hairs to be coming in, which they are. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap where we put that blue. Not completely, because we, we do want it to be really dark. And crisscross, crisscross those lines, really soft at the end. Keep rotating your pencil. You get these little white hair bits coming in. And then down here is pretty dark. Coming up to the eye is pretty dark, so we can actually use the small circles and kind of glaze over that area. And then we'll add the layer of pencil on top to add the texture. 
just don't want to go into the areas that um, are a bit lighter and completely cover them up. I'm going to come next to the eye a little bit, thinking about the direction using a combo of scribbling and the fur technique. And then coming down here, let's see some lighter hairs going on in here. And the aim is to build up the layers so it looks nice and thick. It doesn't look grainy. I'm just going to have to do something with this bit just to make it make sense. So coming around, there's like a curve in there. So tidying up little areas. And then there's a dark line next to it. And actually it gets darker above. And that little white part in the middle, I don't want to draw on that. I want to leave that out. I've made it much bigger than it needs to be, just so that I don't draw over it. I'm going to add some of the dark sepia to the lighter parts. And then I'm just going to keep building and building. Keep rotating your pencil. Coming up to the edge. I'm actually going to go in with a little bit of the worn up brown because you can see some brown towards the edges as the fur gets lighter. It all ties it all in as well because you've got fur in the middle. So it's going to tie it in. So I'm going over the same areas that appear a little bit darker. You can see it's starting to form little clumps, little lines. I'm going to blend this a little bit, but we do want these clumps to stay. We don't want to fill in the gaps in between. We want to keep that shape. So a nice sharp pencil again towards the edges. You can see the white hair starting to show through. I'm going to add some brown into here where it gets a little bit lighter. I'm going to put that blue back in. Can you see the blue? Or is it just me? I think regardless, it's going to really add something to the lighter, shiny parts. It's going to make the black fur look shinier. So if you've seen a Labrador, that's what I can always think of when you draw a black, shiny dog. It's always a Labrador in my head. Um, you see that in the shine, you get some real blues and purples and it really does add to it. Create that curve around a little bit, darkening. And again, this is going to really come to life when you start adding the, the black. What time is it? Wow, the time it just goes, doesn't it? It just goes to show how you can lose yourself completely in your drawing. I think what I might do is try and build this up a little bit more. And then we'll just start quickly on the white fur because this is going to be exactly the same on the other side, just a little bit larger. I tend to work, because I'm right handed, I tend to work from top to bottom and left to right from here. Because his face is at the bottom, I've started at the bottom, but that's going to be a bit of a smudging problem. But that's why I'm trying to work from left to right as much as I can. Generally, the face is up here. We're going a little bit backwards. I have some seen some people, if they are working like this, they'll start, they will literally start up in the top part of the ear, which is fine. I tend to like to put the eyes in because it gives me, it just brings the drawing to life a little bit. It just gives me that motivation to keep going a little bit because you can quite easily get disheartened in the ugly stage. Don't worry if your whisker is disappearing a little bit under the pencil because you can always lift it back easily with the Tombow. I'm going back in with the dark sepia, just starting to build up a little bit more. And coming across here, making sure that I'm softening things. Even in that blue, I want to glaze a little bit because it's a bit dark, a bit light, sorry, a bit blue. 
just going to put a bit of dark sepia. There's another reason I love this pencil so much is because you can glaze over the top. You don't lose the colour, you don't lose the texture, but it just darkens the whole thing without you having to go back in and work really hard building up another layer. So it's looking okay. It's looking a bit grainy still, which I don't like. I just want to go in with the black and show you how it kind of comes to life. Um, when you start adding the black, the black is definitely down in this part and coming up here using a soft hand still. I'm not pressing any harder and you will find that you'll need to go in a few times with the black. Like I said, it kind of tends to soak into the paper and it will blend in a little bit. It will smudge a little bit. So coming into the bottom, darkening everything up. It gives that lovely rich. And thinking about the length of the fur, so it kind of comes up into that 45 degree angle. Keep going, light hand, building up. Whiskers disappearing a little bit, but that's okay. Taking the fur out to the edge. Going over the top of the lighter area as well. There's still some dark parts in there. You might need to go over the top with the black, um, over the top of the black with the dark sepia and then back in with the black. I tend to try to get an area like 85, 90% done and then I'll come back and add finishing touches towards the end. And these black bits of fur in clumps again. I want to really darken up this area around the eye. So I'm changing the direction of my pencil a little bit just to add the thickness. And also your, your arm gets tired. So if you change the direction, it just helps a little bit. So I'm coming around the eye. There's definitely a dark a darkness around the edge of the eye. Think of that clockwise motion again. And actually some of the hairs come off from that, darkening up. Just watching the direction of your pencil. If you do the scribbly technique, you don't want it to show up too much. Coming here, there's a bit of blackness there. So keep them going. And then around this part, making sure that that's all edged nicely and it's as dark as it needs to be. That darker edge, you'll find that you might need to darken up the eye a little bit. Um, I've got a weird lid on here, a little bit of a line, so I'm going to fill that in so that the eye kind of gets pushed back to where it should be. I'm just going to add a little bit up here. I probably want to change the shape of that at some point, make it a little bit more rounded here. A little bit more, more pointed up there. Break it up, There's some lines going off. This needs another layer. I think you could just keep going, keep going. I don't think we're gonna have time to completely finish that part today, but you can get the idea of how to build up through the darkness. I just wanna to touch on this part now so that you can do the other side of the nose if you want to and then tomorrow we can move on to the weird fur at the top and possibly an ear so i'm going to map in oh i didn't emboss i don't think around the mouth that's important get your embossing tool and emboss around the mouth don't want to lose that and then we can add this sweet little mouth in just going to use small circles now we've embossed the white hair is going to show up it's like a little smile. I don't think it is a little smile, but I'm going to put it as a smile. Um, and then I just want to sharpen up the edge a little bit, even though well, there are some hairs coming through. So once you've got your shape that you're happy with, you can darken it up a little bit with this dark sepia. These little hairs coming through I'm using a combo of the circles and the fur technique. You want it to look like there's fur on top. 
There's a little bit here that's darker. I'm going to put that in. Now, another trick that you can use if you um, want to use the slice tool, it doesn't work as well on um, smooth paper as it does on um, like drafting film or something like that. But what I'll tend to do is go in underneath as a base layer and use a light pencil. Now you can use, what I would generally use is a Caran d'Ache like buff titanium or a white maybe, um, just to add it in. But you can get away with the polychromos. What you want is to add a layer that you can then scrape back to with the slice tool. If you found your slice tool's not working that well on smooth paper, this is probably the reason because you just need to have a layer down for you to be able to scrape back to. You can also use the warm grey one and the cold grey one, all depending on whether there's warmth or cool tones. In this case, there's a little bit of both. There's warm towards the nose and there's cool in a stripe here. So I'm going to use a combo of both, the warm. So getting that base colour down, blocking it in, and then we can add the um, colours on top. So it's darker under here, and you'll find that your slice tool will work so much better. Just blending around the edge there. And then I'm gonna use the cold gray one, just to come up here. There's a stripe that goes up. And then there are some cool tones within this section. So I'm using a scribbly pencil stroke. This is just your base layers to enable you to slice back to around the nose as well. And then I'm going to go in with the cold grey three. Yeah, cold grey three, just sharpen that a little bit and start to add. Now we've got our base layers in, we can add the little hairs around the nose, thinking about the direction again. And then we can start to add little hairs coming up here. Usually with light fur or white fur, very little of it is actually white, so not much of it. Over here, there is a band of white, although the paper is not as white as that band is. So you're going to have to have a bit of a judgment call about how dark to go. I always tend to find for it to show up, like if you have an edge that's really white, that can look quite strange if um, it doesn't show very much. So I'll tend to go in with either a cold or a warm grey one. And, and just darken the whole thing up a little bit, which means you need to balance your darkness with the other sections as well. So that's the cold grey three. I'm gonna go in with the warm grey three now. It's definitely a combination of both of them and start to add a little bit up here towards the nose, spacing it out again, because there's quite a few gaps going on. I'm gonna add it to this side while I'm here. And I can go in with my ivory, just going soften and add a base layer. Back in with the warm grey three and starting to build up next to the nose. And then coming down, don't forget there's always dark bits of fur within the light and it just pulls it all in together. So working my way, starting to build up again, doing that crisscross because we want a few little clumps coming here. We want a definite dark line here where the kind of whiskers are. Changing the direction of the fur to go down now. And then there's a definite shadow and a line here next to the mouth. So that's important. Again, that's going to be giving it form. I'm thinking about the direction of the fur around here, coming next to the nose in there while I've got the warm grey in my hand, adding some fur in here, getting that texture in. I'm going to go in with the, I've got the warm grey one, I'm going to go in with the cool grey, the cold grey one and add the edge here. It's like I said, I don't like, yes it's white but it's not going to show and I always think that looks a bit strange. It's almost like your drawing's disappeared. 
we've got no outer edge. So going in with the warm grey three again, building up this side. You can see how now the embossing is really coming to life. And then we're going to work our way up the nose. It tends to go a little bit vertical up the nose and then we're spreading out again this way. Working my way up through the greys, I'm going to go into the warm grey five and just build on what we've already put in. This line here, darkness around here, little lines that come up, some real dark areas coming down into this bottom part where the shadow is. Adding a little bit more pencil in there with this warm grey five. And then coming next to the nose again, letting that show up. Vertical as we move up and then spreading out as we come down. Leaving quite big gaps in between your pencil strokes because we want the overall look to be light. And then we're going to add a little bit to the edge because that's going to turn into the dark fur again. Coming down here, definite darkness here. If you're finding that um, you want to darken it all up again without putting lots and lots of layers or going over the top lots of times, again, we can glaze. You can actually go in, I mentioned this yesterday, the Colourless Pencil Blender. Um, Karen Dash do good ones, so there are a few options. You can blend with the Colourless Pencil Blender. I said about the dark fur and how important it is to soften the pencil strokes. I actually think I'm going to change my mind and say that lighter fur, it's really important to blend because that can look really strange if it's too pencily, too textured and it's not blended. By blending the lighter colours together, the colds and the warms, you'll find that you'll get a much softer uh, look to the fur which is my aim it might not be it might not be your aim in which case um, you like the look of the the pencil but if you're noticing that you want it to look a little bit softer and you don't know how then definitely blend in between um, because it just moves some of that pigment around it just shifts it around and it's not so concentrated in one area I'm going to go in with the cold grey. I've got a different cold grey. Yeah, I'm going to go in with a darker cold grey, just cold grey six. I'm going to add that around the nose. This is all really quite dark around here. I'm going to add a little bit to the bottom. I'm going to add some first strokes in there. I'm going to darken up this little line. And darken up here. Darken up underneath. And I'm actually going to glaze with the warm grey three. Small circles. So this is when you add colour all over without taking away. I'm glazing around by the mouth. I want that to be a little bit darker. And you, what you will find is you're thinking, I'm going really dark here. I've got so many colours going on. But until you add this dark patch, suddenly this will look really light and you need to add more. Um, I'm going to go in with the warm grey five and I'm going to build that up even more. And you're thinking, what are you doing? You're going so dark. It looks really, really grey. But I mean, at the end, if you want to lift it up a little bit with your Tombow, you've always got that option. But I can almost guarantee that when we start putting in this black, this isn't going to even look dark enough. Coming down here, adding a little bit round there. We want that form of the nose. It does actually look a little bit darker on the screen than it does in real life. Um, so I'm pressing really lightly, not hard at all, and just building up the colours slowly. But there are so many colours that go on and make up white fur. Um, it's not one or the other. And you can find that, you know, if you've got a lighter bit, now we've added our base layer, you can scrape a little bit in the middle. It's very subtle, but it shows these little light pieces of fur 
um, and you can always lift up your embossing as well. You can lift it up with your slice or you can lift it up with your, your Tombow just to show that whisker a little bit more brightly again. We might need to add some dark around it. I obviously didn't press hard enough with that and then you can go in and just tidy it up a little bit just so it shows a bit more. Okay, none of it's completely finished. Until we go into the next part, we can't um, know how dark we need to go. But I hope I've given you enough to be able to work on this side now, if you want to, if you want to carry on today. And um, this, I think I would naturally leave until I've got that black in so that I know what needs to be done here. Tomorrow, we're going to work on this strange fur here, the real speckledy fur, and then it would be really nice if we can get an ear in because that's quite different as well. Um, let me know what you think. I'm just going to, I might need to rotate my phone just so that I'm the right way up. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit close, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. Take my glasses off um, my first. My favourite pencil, the greys, although, yeah, definitely. I love the greys so, so much. Um, I thought it would be bright colours, but use the greys. Definitely the greys and the browns. I just use those all of the time. How are you feeling about your raccoons? Are you feeling OK? Is it going OK? Um, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions about it before I pop off for the day um, that I can help you to move on with your next part? of your raccoon. Um, I don't want to leave you in the lurch, but tomorrow uh, it's always nice to come back with fresh eyes and then you can have a look tomorrow and see how it's going. And then you can always touch things up and change it around. Um, there are no rules. It's just about taking away the pressure and making it fun. Uh, I just feel like he's got such a cute face and he's coming together a lot more quickly than a lot of the other um, drawings that I've done lately. Sometimes drawings are a little bit more of a challenge, they're a little bit more of a struggle and sometimes they just tend to go together so so well. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed today. Just uh, the last thing, uh, to be entered into the competition you will need to like and to comment on every video and you will be entered into the competition. The prizes are, first prize is a month in the Mindful Artist membership for free and the second prize is a month in the Joy of Drawing membership for free. Um, so the membership, the doors are now open. If you want to continue your drawing journey with me, if you've enjoyed this workshop, which I really hope you have, and you want to carry on, I think sometimes it's quite nice to have somebody just in your corner pushing you a little bit to carry on. Because the thing I'm most passionate about is that we make drawing more of a priority, not just drawing, just something that you find good for you. You know it's good for you because you've done it before, you've done it for a while. You know that you are drawn to it, excuse the pun. Um, maybe you did it in the past, maybe you've had a gap, uh, but you know that it does calm you down, it makes you feel good, it's important. And I think so often we put it down on the list, we'll do it when we've done everything else, and that list never gets done. I don't know about you, but my to-do list just gets longer and longer and longer, and the drawing just gets pushed to the bottom of the pile. And then I get to the point where I think, oh my God, I'm not doing any of the things that I know lift me up. And that's so important. Life is so short. Really, why is it, it doesn't have to be such a struggle. It doesn't have to be all of this stuff that we need to do. We need to prioritise the things that are good for us and that um, make us feel good. Um, and I talked about that connection as well yesterday. Now more than ever, I've noticed how important connection is. Connecting with people that are positive, that are encouraging, that, um, you know, lift you up a little bit, that you know that you've got in your corner. One of the things about the membership is that I am there at the end of a messenger. If you're feeling a bit low, I'm a hypnotherapist as well. I'm so passionate about the brain and how we can change negative thought patterns. We do have control over them. Um, I'm living proof of that. Something that I practice every day. It's like a muscle. You need to keep it going. But there are so many techniques during hypnotherapy that can help so much with your mindset, how you're feeling day to day. Doesn't have to be 
the way that it's always been. You can change it, you are in control, and I am testament to that, believe me. If you wanna know more about that, then please do let me know. But the Mindful Artist membership is much more interactive. In fact, I'm just doing the schedule for next month. We've got a group hypnotherapy session that's gonna be next week in the evening. And um, I've got stuff in the membership as well in the library about mindset, the brain, you know, all of these little things. We have a draw along once a month, which is just like this. Um, we have Q and A's and what else do we have? Art clinic, if you're stuck on your own work or have a catch up and a chat. It's just, that's one of my favorite evenings of the month, definitely, just to have a chat with my members, um, just to see how they're doing and to check in. So the Mindful Artist is much more interactive. The Joy of Drawing is just the library of tutorials that is growing in the four different pencil types, colored pencils, pastel pencils, watercolor and graphite. And um, we do have a Q&A slash catch up uh, once a month as well, which is always really lovely. So if you want to find out more about the memberships and coming and joining uh, the lovely members that are already there, I love them so much. They are such a fab group of people and just having that connection and that support and tuition as well to help you move on in your pencil journey, um, whichever stage you are at from beginners to, you know, further along, I'm always learning. I don't want to stop learning. It's so important. I've put the links in the description if you want to find out more. Doors are open at the moment. They'll be closing on next Friday, so a week today, um, and they won't be opening again until the next workshop, which I don't know when that's going to be. So have a look. Uh, don't miss out, it will be a lovely project. Get that, keep that momentum. When you're doing something good, it's important not to let that go because it will just get pushed to the bottom of the pile and you deserve more than that. You deserve to be top of the pile and feeling good every day, showing up as your best self. Not happy all the time, you know, not flowers and roses all the time, but okay, feeling all right and having the tools to be able to lift yourself back up from any situation that's going on in life. I haven't even checked the comments. Sorry, I'm really close. Um, thanks, Samantha. Very enjoyable and so glad, Leslie. My pleasure. Oh, thank you, Kate. So lovely to have you. Hopefully you'll be joining me tomorrow for day three where we can dive into the weird fur. I really want to tell you a lot about the texture and the technique for that, getting the best look of the fur. I'll say bye for now. Have a lovely Friday, whatever you're up to. I hope you're okay. Um, check out the links if you want to, if you want to have a look. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye for now.